Okay, our next question is going to be for our mayor candidates, and we'll start with you, John. Uh, in 2013, the decision was made to lay off a fireman and two policemen for the 2014 budget. Public safety is always a top concern of citizens. What is your plan for the city to continue to properly fund our police and fire while ensuring we do not return to the point of facing layoffs again? Well, I think safety and security are two of the priorities that the Linton Civic side has to deal with and has to maintain. 2014 is not the same as, it, as today in 2023. I think retaining that security force, the police force, and the fire department is going to be more of a tough issue than trying to get funds to pay for them. Trying to find qualified candidates that's going to stay in the city police force and, and the, the qualified candidates in the fire department is getting harder. A lot of activities, even hiring teachers at the school was almost, it, it, the pool became way too shallow when we had openings. And that's what we're seeing today is a lot of the policemen have opportunities elsewhere to make more money and they're going to be leaving. I don't think we're going to have a, an issue with trying to find funds and have to lay people off. I think we're going to have issue of keeping and retaining the qualified people that we do have. And we need to look at how can we add to that to not overburden the fire department and the police department. That is two priorities that have to be maintained for this community. And without the funding, and I think we have to place the priority on that funding and come up with ways, maybe if we have to raise the tax rate to make that happen, then so be it. But those are two functions that we have to maintain in our community. And we have to have the decent resources and we have to compensate those resources accordingly. When a state trooper now is entering the state police force can make 70 some thousand and our police force makes something less than 50,000, that's a pretty big jump and you're gonna see a lot of people want to go to that next level. But we have to look at how can we retain the people that we have in place and then add that to that eventually to get the police force in a sound, solid position and the fire department to be well manned and maintained. As far as I know right now, we are full staff in both departments. Uh, the issue is salary. With the state police going up to where they're going up to, you are gonna have some movement. Now we did get monies in this year to get our policemen raises that kind of, I believe, border with what the county's gonna be paying because they got a good increase through the county council this year. So maybe we won't have the jump in that area because we had a lot of deputies and and the locals jumping back and forth departments there. Uh, with the public safety tax that was initiated helped tremendously to keep the ambulance and everything we've got rolling and paying our EMTs out of it and going that route. Right now we're sitting pretty decent other than with the salaries, our equipment, our cars. You know, I think, I think the police department just rolled over several cars in the last year for new ones. So we're sitting good in that area and have the money to fund that. It's just keeping up with today's salaries going where they're going. Now, when you run into the state police's salary, you're looking at, I think, I think after your five or 10 years, you know, they're getting up close to 90 to a hundred thousand dollars, which is a lot of money in Linton. If that's a state policeman in Indianapolis, Carmel, that's a little bit different story. You know, I don't see a lot of people jumping to the state police because I just don't believe there's gonna be that many openings come up. Hopefully that's the way it stays. But the salaries will have to be a continuous address from here on out to keep our, our officers and firefighters here. And it's not cheap to train these people. So we don't wanna lose them. Uh, 